I want to give a quick thank you to the WD-40 company for sponsoring this video. Well, it's getting to be about that time. So I need to figure out uh, how many gallons of oil I need for Big Red because I needed to get the oil changed on this. And it's getting to be springtime where we can start sending corn down to the river. So I pulled out the manual, had a look, and the oil capacity of the standard engine, the filter is 0 0.7 gallons, the oil pan, um, high to low is nine to seven US gallon, gallons. And total system capacity, including the filter, is 10.3. So I need about 10 gallons of oil to put into the truck. And I need to find out where I can put 10 gallons of oil, because that's a lot of oil. I just called down to Truck Country and they sell one gallon jugs of 15W40. Um, for fifteen forty-four a gallon, and I looked online. I could get five-gallon pails for anywhere from seventy to one hundred and twenty bucks, depending on how soon I want them. So I think I'll probably just go down and get the j gallon jugs from Truck Country as well. Uh, it's just easier for me that way. Although unfortunately, I'm not really crazy about going to have all those plastic jugs laying around. I need to get my oil filter, my fuel filter, and I also want to change the coolant filter out while I'm here. Now, according to the manual, you're supposed to change out the oil every 10,000 miles um, or six months. And it has been two years since I've changed out the oil, but I've only probably put on maybe 6,000 on the truck since the last time we changed the oil on it. So not a lot of miles getting put on it there. So the happy medium is to wait longer every other year, change the oil. I would say that's good. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that would change it every six months religiously, but I'm not one of those people. Oh, it's a bit of a windy one out today. So we're gonna go down, unhook Big Red. I went and got filters for the truck, so it's time to change the oil. Let's go down and unhook it from the trailer. cheesy now we got the trailer unhooked so it's time to see if the battery disconnect that we installed does its job this is going to be the first time starting the truck this year so she's been sitting a while well we got plenty of power Inside the shed enough for me. Before I shut the truck down though, I'm gonna lift the hood up and I'm gonna get the truck up on some blocks because I learned the last time I did this that it's kind of hard to fit a pan or a bucket under there to catch all that oil considering that there's 10 gallons of it that I gotta drain. So I'm gonna throw some blocks under it, get the front end elevated. Now this is where our WD-40 specialist degreaser comes in handy. And we're gonna spray down the filters before we start handling them. That way we can keep the area more clean and wipe away any of that grime so I don't get it everywhere. So we're gonna go ahead and give her a spray down. Just really the whole area back in there. So I'm gonna have to end up sticking my arm down in there. We're gonna take our rag, start wiping it down. Now this tool right here is a lifesaver. That's probably a good piece of advice. 
turn the shutoff off on the coolant filter before trying to remove it, huh? Uh, something tells me this shouldn't be this hard to turn, but it is. Okay. Just on that coming. Got the new coolant filter here. I'm gonna run a dab of oil around the seal. And now we're good to put the new one on. On to the next one. Okay. I actually really appreciate the little contraption that we've got going on under the oil pan here. All I gotta do is just pull the lever and twist it and it just starts draining. What we used to use the oil for, majority, the majority of the oil, was for lube on the barn cleaner chain down in the uh, dairy barn. We still use the barn cleaner down there, so it's not like we don't ever need to use oil, used oil for it. Um, it's nice to have around for that reason. But uh, these days we have a definite surplus of used oil. There's the fuel filter just waiting to be changed. So it looks to me like we're sitting at around seven or eight gallons that was in there, which very well could have been uh, what I put in uh, last time I changed it out. But the thing is, it does leak oil. So over the last two years that I've run it, in the meantime, I have not put any more oil in it. Um, the oil level's always been good. So um, what this truck leaks, if anything, is coolant. Uh, that's about the biggest problem that I have. But all one thing at a time i just got the fifth wheel plate changed out on this this past fall and that makes me feel a lot better driving it around um, there's not as much uh, free play in the fifth wheel anymore and that just makes it feel a lot safer to drive now once this is all drained out um it is actually all drained out i'm gonna go around and take off the oil filter now that's gonna make a mess and then I gotta change out this fuel filter here yet and we should be set. Then it's pretty much just normal maintenance, making sure that's, that everything's greased, going around and checking all of the fluid levels to make sure everything's good. Here's a new oil filter. There's no real clean way to take this old one off, so usually it's pretty messy. Here's our engine oil filter. Spray this bad boy with some degreaser too. Oh, I just crawled underneath trying to figure out the best way to put this filter back in. 
there's really no good way to go about it. I should have pointed the wheels to the right before I shut it down to give me more room, but I'm gonna have to get on the other side of this tire here and basically just reach down from underneath. Well, at least it's cozy down in here. Not quite comfortable, but we're gonna make it work. Shouldn't have had that last PB&J. All right. It's a little bit more to the left than I remember, but it is what it is. All right. Now, don't ever over tighten these because they are not fun to take off. If they're too tight, shut that off. Push that out to where it's more reachable. Now, the fuel filter comes with an inner seal. As you can see there, that's the old one. Here's the new one, as well as being sealed around the outside. So we got the old filter off, and so far everything's going smoothly. I shouldn't have said it. I shouldn't have said it. I shouldn't have said it. To set up eight and then check the oil level and that'll give me a good figure on where i'm supposed to be 10 is just the max and that's including all of the oil that gets put through the filter and in the pan and that's the high level so we're gonna start at eight work up to 10. there we go um, that's a good spot for you. Cool. Right now is about the time you ponder whether or not you remembered to put the bolt back in or to close the shutoff valve. Pretty sure I did. Yeah. All right, so that was eight gallons that I put in. Pull out the dipstick and have a look. Now on the dipstick, it reads above the full line. I don't believe that. Um, once I fire it up, it's gonna send oil through the filter and that'll take up 0.8 of a gallon. And that'll get us to where we should need to be. But I think I'm gonna fire it up and give it a minute and then I'll add oil in as necessary after the fact. But I think the amount that I've got in it right now is pretty good. It's right in the middle of the range of what it says is acceptable. And on this, on the dipstick, it's on to the last L in full. So <laughs> I'm sure you guys can't see that, but let's go ahead and close the lid up, fire it up. When it turns over, it's gonna send all the fluids back through the filters and uh, get everything cleared out, filled up. Okay, 
Give it a moment. Just to make sure we aren't getting any leaks anywhere. Now this fifth wheel top plate was changed last fall, but it doesn't hurt to go through and clean out all the old grease and give it fresh coat. I noticed on this new fifth wheel plate that it looks like it was rubbing on this side over here even though I've been keeping it pretty well lubed and it looks like I got quite a few metal shavings in the grease over here. So, for anybody that knows more about trucks than I do, is that normal? Just a quick question. Because you can see that the shavings are even up in the grease in here. This is the big reason why I wanted to change it out because it's been doing some rubbing. So, my guess is that could have been from uh maybe an area where it was riding on that side too hard and i can think of a couple places that would have done that so maybe coming in and out of the fields would have shaved that end off well that didn't go quite like i planned the guy before me that owned this truck hit a deer and i hit a deer last fall with the hood and it looks like the sports just gave out. What? All right, I think we're tilting it back. It's about where it should be, so yeah, tilt it back. Can you? So I'm not going to hook this up for now. I just backed it underneath to hook it onto the trailer because we're supposed to get thunderstorms tonight. And I just feel better having the two connected. But uh, looks like we'll be taking the big red down to have the hood replaced on it. Wasn't really planning or expecting that quite yet. Um, we've known that the hood has been getting weak. The hinges have, with the hinges where it connects to the fiberglass has been breaking out. Um, I was told that was because the deer that it was hit before I bought it, plus the deer that I hit last fall may have done it in. Um, late at night when you're driving down the road, down in a valley, it's kind of hard to slow down or stop for a deer, especially for how fast they run. And I didn't even think I hit him, but yeah, sure enough, it did damage to the front end. But um, the hinges finally gave up, so now I'm going to have to try to figure out where I can get a new hood. They're not exactly the cheapest thing in the world. They're actually pretty expensive. So if I can find a good used one, maybe I'll just go out and replace it with a used one. But brand new, I don't know. It's supposed to be, they're supposed to be fit to the truck. So it worries me about getting the right size. Uh, this is a FLD 112. So it's actually got a shorter hood on it than the FLDs, D120s, which are supposedly more common. But if we get a new, but brand new hood, these are gonna have to come off, which they're just bolted through. The lights are gonna have to come off. That's gonna have to go with it. The grill. Um, I'll be lucky if I can get the grill to fit to a new, yeah, I'll be lucky if I can get the grill to fit to a new fiberglass hood. And then there's always that. But I'll have to do some more research. Uh, luckily, I mean, it's not like I gotta start hauling corn tomorrow, but um, definitely another thing that I wasn't really planning on paying for, especially since I would expect to put a brand new hood on it is probably gonna be like the profit margin I'm gonna have for the truck this fall, or this spring. Last fall, my profit margin was putting the fifth wheel plate on, so. I mean, if I keep going at this rate, I should just have a brand new truck eventually, right? <laughs> but 
anyway, I mean, it is still nice having our own truck, and I don't regret buying it at all. It's just, it is true. They do nickel and dime you over time, but overall, I'm still making money on it. Just, I was kind of looking forward to not having to worry about paying for any new expenses. And then this happened. So hopefully hopefully after this, this is the last one for a while. <laughs> I'd say all that wind is blowing up a storm. We're actually supposed to get the first thunderstorm of the season here in two hours or so. So that's kind of exciting. I like thunderstorms just as long as they're not a uh, derecho or tornado or anything ending in O. <laughs> so um, I'll keep you guys posted on what I do with the truck. Um, what I do about a hood because that's definitely gonna have to get fixed before I start hauling with it uh, Part of me just wants to take a ratchet strap and strap it down, but on the other side I'd kind of be worried about pulling up into the scales With a ratchet strap holding the <laughs> hood down So uh, I'll keep you guys updated on that. So anyway, thanks for watching guys Be sure to check out all of our other videos Be sure to like comment and subscribe and be sure to follow us on Facebook Instagram Twitter and Snapchat all How Farms work, and one lucky commenter will be winning a How Farms work hat from this video. So leave a comment down in the comment section if you're interested in winning. See you next time, guys.